Right, welcome to Flat Cap Society. This time we've got a channel called Flat Earth Truth. What an oxymoron. It's a big word for the Yorkshire, isn't that? And there'll be some more coming up. So why don't we take a look at what this fella has got to say. It's October 1957. The first man-made satellite is launched into the sky and suddenly the world is obsessed with space, planets and the idea that gravity rules everything. Yeah, mate. And before 1957, we all floated to pit like helium balloons. Newton clocked gravity in 1687. Sputnik just went beep because gravity kept it up there. Imagine that. The very thing they're side-eyeing is a reason satellites don't fall on your head. But here's a question you've probably never stopped to consider. If gravity supposedly pulls everything down equally, why do rivers always choose one direction, downhill instead of sideways? <sighs> because down is a direction. Sideways is your wishful thinking. Gravity points to Earth's center or local vertical. Water moves along the steepest drop in total potential. Across a riverbank uphill. Water's lazy, not daft. Doesn't that sound odd? Think about it, you pour water on your kitchen counter, it spreads in every direction until something blocks it. On counter, flat, tiny gradients, nowhere to go. Outside, valleys, ruts, channels, and a few million years of erosion showing water exactly where the easy route is. That's not discipline, that's path of least effort. Nature's version of, oh, I'll take the bus. But outdoors, on a massive scale, water seems strangely disciplined. Rivers never flow sideways across landscapes, they only follow downhill. Tell that to Mississippi drawing calligraphy, or the Amazon doing weekend donuts. Sideways motion is called meandering. They shift whole floodplains, cut oxbow lakes, and occasionally jump channel entirely. Sideways, rivers invented it. So what exactly does down mean on a giant spinning globe? If you're in America, your down points one way. If you're in Australia, your down points the opposite way. Correct. And everyone's tear still heads towards their shoes, not the clouds. Each place has its local down, local vertical. You don't feel the difference because you're not 6,000 miles tall. Your brew doesn't need a passport stamp to fall. Yet rivers don't suddenly curve off sideways into space, isn't that bizarre? Only if your river's doing 28,000 kilometers an hour. Earth spin gives Coriolis, great for weather systems, tiny for rivers. It can favor erosion on one bank, yeah, but it's not yeeting the Thames into orbit. If it were, Tower Bridge would need afterburners. The desire here is simple. We want to understand how something so familiar, rivers, can actually expose one of the strangest mysteries about the place we live. We're told the answer is gravity. End of story, but hold on. Gravity is supposed to act the same everywhere, right? So why doesn't it pull rivers sideways just as much as down? Because on a level surface, the sideways bit's zero. Flow starts when the surface isn't level. That's your gradient. No slope, no go. It's plumbing with scenery. Here's where the conflict kicks in. If you search for explanations, you'll get a lot of scientific sounding words, gravitational vectors, geoid models, equipotential surfaces. It feels like jargon designed to sound convincing, but not really clear. Okay, let's translate these big words for you into something a little bit more friendly. Let's start with vector. Think how hard and which way. Like saying, wind's belting it at 20 mile an hour from west. Not poetry, just an arrow with manners. Geoid. Earth's true sea level shape. A bit lumpy. Like Uncle Kev's jumper after Christmas. It's the surface a perfectly calm ocean would follow if you could drain the weather and faff. We use it to know what level actually means everywhere. Lastly, equipotential surface. 
the place where water says, ah, that's flat enough. Along that surface there's no downhill to chase, so water doesn't flow along it. Tip the surface even a smidge and you've got a gradient. Water toddles off that way, lazy as a Sunday, but unstoppable. Now these aren't magic words, they're the tape measure, spirit level and arrow of physics. If you can handle lefty loosey and righty tighty, you can handle this lot. Try asking, if you stood on the side of a spinning ball and poured water, wouldn't it try to curve off? Yet rivers don't drift east or west from spin, they flow consistently downhill. Ooh, bang on. Terrain sets the route, rotation nibbles at the edges. Congratulations on sneaking one correct sentence into a conspiracy casserole. But downhill compared to what? To the ground under your feet? Or to some invisible centre we're told exists miles beneath us? The change happens when you start flipping the perspective. Instead of seeing Earth as a ball, picture it as a level stage where water always seeks the easiest path lower ground. That would explain why rivers never flow sideways into the sky. They just carve through valleys, always seeking the next lowest point. Suddenly the everyday becomes mysterious. The Mississippi, the Nile, the Amazon, they all behave like water poured on a flat surface, tilted just enough to give direction. A tilted tray sends everything the same way. Real Earth has watershed divides. One raindrop heads to the Atlantic, t'other to Pacific. Sometimes ten yards apart on a ridge. Your tray model would make the whole planet one big slip and slide to Grimsby. And here's the result. You don't have to claim one model is right or wrong to notice something feels off. Rivers flow downhill, yes. But down isn't as simple as it sounds. On a spinning globe, down is different everywhere. Yet rivers never reveal that difference. They literally map it. That map is called drainage basins. Stand on the Pennine, spit left, it goes to one sea. Spit right, goes to another. Don't try to, we've got standards. Rivers show local down by which basin they join. It's geography, not guess who. They flow like the world beneath them is steady, not whirling. No, it acts like gravity is massive and spin is tiny at river scale. Typical big river slope, a few centimetres drop per kilometre. Enough to move continents worth of water, not enough to launch it into the exosphere, champ. Isn't it strange that the most ordinary thing, flowing water, might be the biggest clue that our world is not what we've been told? Rivers prove erosion works and engineers pass exams. Romans laid aqueducts on gravity alone, and the water still turns up 2,000 years later without consulting YouTube. If gravity were a fairy tale, your local reservoir would be a sky fountain. So next time you stand by a river, don't just watch it move. Ask yourself, where exactly is it going and what does that say about the ground you're standing on? Okay, so just to recap. Down is local vertical to earth centre plus a teeny spin tweak. Water follows the steepest available drop, channels and terrain do the steering. Rivers happily go sideways or meander, they just won't climb hills for your aesthetics. Drainage divides are the receipts that down varies place to place. And the one tilt flat world can't produce the messy beautiful spider web of basins we actually see. So next time someone whispers, rivers debunk gravity. Smile, take a dignified sip of your tea and say, bless you. When your driveway starts flowing uphill, I'll ring NASA. Till then, I'm going to ring a plumber. Well, we're coming to end of another one. Let's hope flat earth truth has been educated with a bit of Yorkshire wisdom. So until next time, just remember, the only thing flat in Yorkshire is his gaps. Ta-da!